It's Friday, July 3rd, and time for your Barbados Today Morning News Update. The Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association believes government has gotten it right with its travel protocols. Newly elected chairman Jeffrey Roach said he was also in agreement that this was the right time to reopen the island's borders and accept visitors. Speaking to Barbados today while at the opening of the Worthing Food Court last evening, Roach said government made smart decisions. The new BHTA chairman also spoke on the issue of Liat. He said Barbados stands to lose out on tens of thousands of visitors from the Caribbean due to the loss of the regional carrier. Roach said the region accounted for a significant number of visitors to the island, behind those from the main source markets of the UK and the US. However, with the recent decision taken to liquidate Liat, Roach said it meant Barbados would definitely feel the impact if a replacement was not found quickly. The situation with Liat is very unfortunate because, you know, as a regional carrier, really, Liat has facilitated inter-regional travel. And uh, any loss of an inter-regional carrier is going to really hurt the ability of the region to move between islands. And uh, the visitorship to Barbados from regional um, countries has been able at number three in terms of all of those numbers. So potentially that will have an impact on our business and numbers going forward. Um, you know, we are hopeful that some new entity or some refashion layout will emerge quickly to take up that space and ensure that we can still maintain some individual travel. Um, hopefully that will happen, you know, it's still uncertain, but certainly we will be supportive of any um, efforts to ensure that that space is filled as quickly as possible. Prime Minister Mia Mott is to hand over the chairmanship of the 15-member regional group in to her St. Vincent and the Grenadines counterpart, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, at Friday's special CARICOM conference. However, Antigua and Barbuda will not be represented at the 20th special meeting, which will be held via video conference beginning at 10 a.m. The Caribbean Media Corporation reported that it had been reliably informed that the Gaston Brown administration will not be represented at the talks where regional leaders are expected to also address a number of procedural matters. CMC said it also understands that Antigua and Barbuda's position is linked to efforts to liquidate the financially strapped regional airline Liat, which is headquartered in St. John's. A Trinidadian student who tested positive for COVID-19 had been isolated in Port of Spain for almost two weeks before testing positive. So says Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George in response to concerns after Trinidadian officials earlier this week suggested that the case originated in Barbados. Dr. George confirmed that the situation was under investigation, but stressed that the case is not clear-cut as the infected student had left left Barbados since June 15. He added that the female student tested a negative prior to her departure from Barbados and upon arrival in Trinidad and Tobago before entering mandatory quarantine at the UWI St. Augustine campus. Barbados today, however, understands that authorities in Bridgetown have embarked on a rigorous process of contact tracing, which includes the testing of all students still living at the University of the West Indies Cable Campus Halls of Residence. There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. To news from the region, health officials in St. Lucia have issued yet another appeal to residents to adhere to measures put in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george made the plea after the island recorded three new coronavirus cases. The positive cases are all returning nationals who worked on cruise lines. Upon return to St. Lucia in June, they were all placed in institutional quarantine and were tested in keeping with the testing strategy for repatriated cruise line workers. Upon receipt of these results, all three individuals have been transferred to the respiratory hospital for isolation and related supportive care. They are all currently doing well. The risk to people in quarantine and the staff of the facility is assessed as low given the infection prevention and control guidelines in place at the state-managed quarantine sites. These recently confirmed cases again proves the importance of quarantine as a measure to minimize the risk of transmitting COVID-19 to protect the health of every individual within our country. We once again appeal that everyone supports our national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19 by adhering to the protocols that have been put in place. We recognize that many of the measures in place may seem inconvenient to the public. However, we strive to ensure public health and safety. And finally, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres issues a call for the world to act now or face the possibility of years of depressed and disrupted economic growth. His warning came as he launched a series of roundtable discussions in a bid to build a multilateral response and recovery plan to the unprecedented global development emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic and the global recession it has triggered are, of course, causing immense human suffering around the world. And unless we act now, we could face years of depressed and disrupted economic growth. Those who suffer most will be the most, the less equipped to respond. Extreme poverty and anger are set to increase drastically. Healthcare systems in many countries are already at breaking point. And the generation of children is missing out on their education. We are on the cusp of a widespread debt crisis, with many countries faced with an impossible choice between servicing their debt or protecting their most vulnerable communities and fighting the pandemic. And debt defaults can have devastating social consequences. And many countries simply do not have access to financial markets to be able to service their debt. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.